Hey everyone, I'm Sandeep and welcome back to 100 Days of Coding React and Redux. Today, I'm going to talk about a really important tool called a JSON server. So if you're a back, so if you're a front-end developer, you don't know back-end, you don't know how to write the REST APIs. We, uh, JSON server is a great tool which helps you generate those API within seconds. So let's jump into the video and talk about the JSON server. So we know like when we create any uh, React application and when, when we run that application, it runs inside a React dev server. So in our case, our note taking app is running inside the React dev server. Now React dev server doesn't have any facility of APIs, right? So if I talk about my application, I'll go back to the, uh, to the notes app, right? So we can add a new note here, right? Test one and test text one, something like this. So I'm able to add a note. Now, when I refresh the app, the note, the, no the notes are gone, right? Because we are not saving the data which we are generating or creating using the form. So React Dev Server doesn't provide any REST API for saving our data. So we need something else, right? So you have a couple of options. You can write your own backend. So you can write your own APIs using Node or Java or any other backend technology, or you can use the third-party API generation tool. And that tool, which we are going to use to you know, generate all this, all those, all these APIs related to nodes quickly is called JSON server. So we're going to have two different servers running inside our machine, your local machine, your laptop, or your computer. One is a React Dev server where your note taking application is running, which is going to interact with another server, which we are going to create soon called the JSON server. And JSON server is going to provide you some of the REST APIs automatically, generally, which are provided by the backend developers. So the REST APIs for getting all the nodes, the post for creating a new node, put for updating existing node, and delete for deleting the node. All right, so these are the things, right, we don't have in our note taking app, and for that, we need this JSON sub. So let's talk about JSON server. Let's see how to read the documentation of any third party API, how to install it, and how you can use that third API for your advantage. So I'll open a new tab in my browser and I'll search for the JSON server. You'll get the link, the first link, JSON dash server. Just click on that and you see here, right? get a full fake REST API with zero coding in less than 30 seconds, seriously. So let's see how we can do it in 30 seconds. Maybe it will take more time, but uh, just start reading the documentation. You should have the habit of, this is a really good habit for developers to understand other people's API. This is open source created by some of the good developers. So this is created with love for front-end developers who need a quick backend for prototyping and mocking. You're going to get the backend APIs from the Java developers for sure, but you need to get started, right? You're a front developer. Uh, so you can prototype your own data, you can prototype your own REST APIs, and you can get started. Later on, once the backend APIs are ready, you can do the integration with that. So I'll scroll down. And you see here, right? So we have like how to install the JSON server. So we'll go step by step. We'll first do the npm install. Now they're installing it globally uh, using JSON server, but uh, I'm going to use a different way. So I'm going to install it locally. I'll copy this command or maybe I'll type it. So I'll open the terminal. Let's stop the running application and I'll say npm install. And this is just a dev dependency. We don't need it in production. So I'll use it save dev and json server i need to be mindful with my spellings it is a json server json server right run this 
and it should get installed quickly. Okay, so we have the JSON server. If you want to check that, we can go back to our code editor and check the package.json file. And probably I have the dev, dev dependency as JSON server. Okay, now next we need to see like how we can use this, right? So create a db.json file with some data. Okay, so in our case, we, we are going to have the nodes, right? So I'm going to copy this. And where it is saying to create the file, file with some data. So I'll create where the package.json is located, right? Here. So let's create db.json. And I'm going to paste some values. So obviously we are going to have the notes, not comments, profile or anything like that. So initially I, I'm going to have some notes created. So we have the ID, we have the title for the note, right? So let's call it this as a note one. And we have text also, right? So you need to match these values with your code, right? So when we generate or when we create a new note, when we add a note, right? We create our note object with ID, title, and text. I'm using the sim similar attributes here, ID, title, and text. Let's add some more notes. Maybe I'll go with another one with ID of two, title of note two, and this will be note text one and let's copy this paste it no text two let's add one more cool so we have the data our notes created let's go back to the documentation so we have created the db.json file now this is how it is working, right? So we have the React dev server. So I'll go back to my terminal. I'm not running the React dev server now. So we have React dev server where no taking app is running. Now I want to start that JSON server so that I can use the db.json file. And uh, behind the scene, uh, JSON server is going to create all of this API endpoint for us, all of this REST APIs. How can, how it is going to happen? So I'm just going to run the server. So to run the server, we need to copy this command. Okay. And uh, we need to put this command into our package.json file. So I'm going to create a new script inside my scripts tag. And here I'll say, I'll name this as API because this is our API, right? And I'm going to save this command. So JSON server and double quotes. So, so once I run this command, right, it's going to create that server, the JSON server, and it will watch for the db.json file. So if you do any changes, right, inside this db.json, we'll have those changes available. And we can communicate with all those REST APIs. So now, if you go to HTTP localhost post one, you'll get this, right? So let's try to hit some of the URLs, but before that I need to run the server, right? So I'll go back to my terminal and I'll say npm run API. Where, where does this API coming from? This is the name of the command, okay? Let's see if it runs. Okay, you see that it, it is also running on localhost 3000, right? I need to see like how I can change the port number of this because our application is also running on localhost 3000 and this server is also running on 3000. So I don't know whether we can run both the app together, but let's try to hit localhost 3000 and then nodes and let's see what we get. So I'm going to hit localhost 3000 slash nodes and see that we are getting all the nodes. So say, suppose I want the first node, right? So I can just say slash one and you'll be able to see only the first node. 
So JSON server has done some magic behind the scene, right? And it has created all of this REST APIs for us. We have a get, right? We have post. So I can add a new node also by sending the post request. I can update the existing node also. I can show you that basically. Let's try that. I'm going to use postman to do that. So I'll grab this URL from here. And maybe I need to close all of this. Okay, so if I send a request, okay, we are not getting any data baggage, localhost 3000 nodes one. Let's try this. Okay. This is giving me something else. Let me try to open a new request, paste the URL localhost 3000, notes, send, see, I'm getting the notes back. Something was coming from the cache. So say, suppose I want the first note and send the request, I'm getting the first note. Now, let's say you want to add a new note, right? So how can we do that? For that, we can send a post request. So, if I'll go back to the documentation again. So we can send a post request, something like this. Okay. And we can pass the data. So let's try that. Notes. And I'll use the post here, right? And I'll write, I'll be, I'll pass some data here. So maybe we'll use the raw. And I'm going to copy this from here. Paste it here. Let's pass note number four, text number four, right? And this will be JSON. Okay. Let's see if we can add a new note. Send. Insert field duplicate ID. Okay. Why it is saying duplicate ID? Okay. We don't need to set the ID. ID will be created automatically, maybe. Let's try this. Okay. You see that? The note has been created. If I go back and open the db.json file, see that uh, previous note was also created, but I got another note created with ID of five. So I'm going to save. And if I hit the, I can try the get request again. And you see that we are getting four notes now, right? Uh, let's take one more example. Say, suppose I want to delete the current note, right? So I'm going to pass its ID like five. I'll remove this and we'll send a delete request. Send. Fine. Looking good. I'll send a get request. See that we are getting only three nodes. So whatever I was trying to do in the postman, uh, we're going to do it inside our react app. We're going to hit all these APIs. We're going to get the data, add new nodes, update the note and even deleting the node. So I think our JSON server is set up, right? And it's running perfectly fine. Probably I need to change the port number. Uh, let me see if I can run the application. So it is running on 3000. So if I try to run my application also on the 3000, what happens? So I'll go back to my folder structure. I'll open a new terminal tab at this folder. And if I try to run npm start, let's see what happens. See that something is already running on port 3000. So that's where I'll say no. Clear. Let's see how we can configure the port of our JSON server. So I'll search for the port. Okay, so you can specify the port number also. So I'm just going to copy this and go back to my package.json file. I'll specify the port number. So port is attributes I'll use here only, right? Dash dash watch dash dash port. We are going to use the port number 3005 just to keep it simple, right? 3000, our application is going to run and on 3005, our JSON server is going to run. So I'll stop my JSON server first. And I'm going to run it again. NPM run API. And now you see that it's running on 3005. And if I now run my application, 
it should run on localhost 3000 see that our application is running on localhost 3000 and our json server is running on localhost 3005 see that oh this try this we are getting all the nodes back okay so we have our json server setup we have our application running uh from the next part of the video series i mean the series will start integrating our application with all of this rest apis exposed by the beautiful really helpful json server with that i'm going to stop here i'll see you in the next video until then you take care goodbye and thanks for watching the video